Well, good morning, Mount Olive. It's good to be here with you this morning. We're excited to be here. And uh, if you're our guest today, we want to know who you are, so please take the bulletin, fill it out, that little flap in the bulletin, and, or take the card in a pew near you and fill it out and uh, let us know who you are. Put in the offering plate if you can, if you don't mind. Do have a few announcements. Don't forget, tonight it's going to be a, a fifth Sunday night singing and fellowship. No services on this Wednesday night. Um, bed ministry tomorrow night, and next Sunday is going to be WMU and Brotherhood. So if you can uh, make sure you put that on your calendars. That is in the bulletin this morning. A couple things that are not in the bulletin um, is if you can run by this morning when you get through church and grab some those Christmas cards. If there's somebody that you can hand deliver, that would be great. Maybe you have some out there that... Um, that, that, that can be picked up. Just check and see if you got any that you can help us help, that you can help us help get passed, passed out. We do want to get those passed out if you can. And then also there's some offering envelopes that we have. So for the new year, those are in the Sunday school window. Just come and pick up what you need. Um, pick up, I know a lot, a lot of you use those, so they're there for you. Just go pick one up. And uh, Brother, brother um, Chester said there's plenty. If you need any questions, you can ask him. I do got a few prayer requests this morning. Um, Mr. Billy Roberts' dad, Robert Roberts, um, is going to have a procedure done on Tuesday, so y'all keep him in your prayers. Miss Karen, keep keep Miss Karen Roberts in your prayers as she's recovering, um, still recovering from her eye surgery, and uh, um, and then also keep him her in your prayer. Her mom is still in the ICU in Tupelo, and uh, that's Karen Roberts' mom, Miss Phyllis Bohannon, and uh, y'all keep her in your prayers as well. Um, now, if you don't mind, if you'll stand up with me, I'm going to read a scripture out of. Um, John chapter 1 this morning. It says, There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many had received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we behold his glory, the glory of the only begotten son from the father, full of grace and truth. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we do thank you. God, we thank you for coming into this world. And we thank you that you've given us an opportunity to know you personally, God, through your son, Jesus Christ. God, I pray that today, God, that we don't miss the opportunity, the moment that we have here to worship you, the one true God. God, I pray that... Um, through our time of singing and, and, and offering praise to you, Father, through our time of listening to your word be preached um, and the proclamation and us doing business with that, God, I pray that we would glorify and worship you, Father. God, I pray that you would move in our midst today. God, I pray that we would receive it and respond to you. And God, that we, our actions would change. God, that we would be exactly what you want us to be. God, where we are is not where we want to be, Father, and I pray that we would grow closer to you today. God, I pray for Brother Anthony and Brother Stanley both, God, that you would use them on their preparation, their time of study, their time of preparing to get ready for today. God, may you bless that and honor it. God, and may you use these two men to do what you want today. Father, I thank you. <clears throat> I pray for those on our prayer list, those that have been mentioned and that we've talked about, God, those that are unspoken in our midst as well. God, we pray for healing. We pray for those that are going through tough times during this time of the year. God, we pray for those that are dealing with loss. and um, God, we pray for those in our community, God, that need to know you as personal Savior and Lord. God, we pray for them as well, God, that you would, God, be uh, use us even possibly as your hands and feet to show them who you are. God, again, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. In your son's name, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> let's, while we're standing, let's have a time of fellowship, please.
good morning. We're going to be uh, meeting this afternoon at 5 o'clock for our singing service, so we look forward to seeing you there, and then we're going to have, as Brother Drew said, a time of fellowship afterwards. So I just wanted to reiterate that that's at 5 o'clock this afternoon. As we begin this morning, we're going to sing to God be the glory, hymn number four. <clears throat>
keeps me singing, hymn 425. Let's stand this morning, and we're going to sing the first, second, and fifth verse.
This road I'm on is straight and narrow But it leads to a better home It was laid by Christ one day upon Calvary When he suffered all alone This road may lead over many high mountains Valleys dark and low But I'll walk each day in sweet assurance And safely reach my goal Up ahead there is joy and gladness And rest for my weary soul Up ahead there's peace to everybody Still I know what lies ahead While on this road I get so weary Often my feet will stray But a gentle hand still leads me onward Helps me find my way as I climb each hill and cross each valley by sand, I'm daily led. And I won't look back, I'm gonna keep right on walking, for I know what lies ahead. Up ahead, there is joy and rest for my weary soul. Up ahead, there's peace to everybody. Know that I'll be, I'll be at home home when no tears will never be shed. Though so often this road gets rough and rocky, still I know what lies ahead. Though so often this road gets rough and rocky, still I know what lies ahead. Thank you, Brother Anthony and choir. So we've had some rocky roads behind us for sure and may have some ahead of us as well, but we do know who holds the future and who holds it in his hand, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. So we can go or get ready to go into a new year with that great assurance that we belong to him, that he loves us and cares for us and has something that he wants to do in our lives that will bring us closer to him, it will draw us closer to our Heavenly Father, and to our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, when I was in seminary, I had to read book after book after book and do book reviews and those type of things. And uh, I was so glad when I finally graduated where I could read a book that I chose, you know, and that I wanted to read. And uh, I read a book in a class. Uh, it was on leadership. And so I read a Jim Collins book called Good to Great. And in that book, um, he says that in business and in leadership, you need what's called the hedgehog principle. And that means you know what is your business and you know what is none of your business. Okay? You know what's important and you focus on that. And you know what's not so important and you don't worry about those things. I think as we head into a new year, what I want to talk to you about this morning is uh, being focused on that which is so important. Uh, being focused on our relationship with the Lord and how He wants to use us in this coming year. But to do that, we're going to take some lessons from the Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians. And I'm going to read from chapter 1 if you want to turn there. Now, the Apostle Paul, we know, was um, one of the, one of the uh, most uh, educated uh, Jewish Pharisees. Uh, he was very ambitious He was very focused. He wanted to excel above everyone else. He wanted to be known in Judaism as the man. The one who was the smartest, the wisest, uh, the one that loved God the most, that followed God the most, that kept the law the best. That was his aim. That's what he desired. And in doing that, or in his desire to do that, of course, when Jesus came along, 
Uh, he wanted to stamp out Christianity, and that was his goal, that was his aim, and that became his focus. But he met the Lord on the road to Damascus, and God gave him another focus. Jesus said, I'm going to show you how much you must suffer for my name's sake. And he called him out to be a missionary. He called him first to be saved, of course, and then to share the gospel with the world. And, and of course, we know Paul would um, have his ministry mostly in the Gentile world. And he wrote um, a letter to the churches at Galatia because they had already turned away from the truth of the gospel. There were those who had come in and tried to convert them or revert them back to the old way of thinking and the old law. Hey, if you keep the law, you know, that's good. That's what you need to do. Keep the law first and then you can, of course, experience the grace of God and know Jesus and all that. But you've got to keep the law first, the law of Moses. And so Paul's going to write to them and say, hey, why would you go back to being enslaved? Why don't you live in the freedom that you have in Christ? And, uh, and he told them in his testimony how he focused on that freedom in Christ and how he wanted them to do the same. So if you're able to stand this morning, I'll ask you to do so as we read God's Word. Uh, Galatians chapter 1, we'll begin reading in verse number 11, and we'll read to the end of the chapter. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers." But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days." But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the gospel which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. Let's pray together. Father, we're grateful for your word. We ask you to bless the reading of it. Father, as we turn our focus and attention upon you and your message, what you have for us today, I pray, Father, that we would be, Lord, not distracted by anything else in our mind or the things that are bothering us, the things that we're looking forward to or even looking behind to, but, Lord, that we would presently now Open our hearts and minds to receive all that you have for us. You are good and gracious. You're kind and loving and forgiving. But you're also a just God. And you convict us when we're wrong, when we sin. And so, Father, we pray thanking you for forgiveness, for cleansing. And, Father, for your Holy Spirit who teaches us your word and what we should be and do. So, Father, now we want to honor and glorify you through this message. And I pray that you will be in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. So we read from the scripture that the Apostle Paul was focused on preaching the gospel that God had called him to. That was certainly his mission in life. And when you, when you read all of the letters that the, that the Apostle Paul wrote, you see in there a great focus in his life to fulfill the mission. And he finally will say in 2 Timothy that he's fought the good fight, he's kept the faith, he's finished his course... And uh, he's ready to go home whenever God calls him home because he has done God's bidding in his life. And so I want us to think about that as we get ready to enter a new year. I want us to think about the focus on living the Christian life that we need. Uh, I, know, I don't know about you, but whenever I want to accomplish something, I do better when I put my focus on that. When I seek to not be distracted by other things, but to let God keep me focused on where he wants me to go and what he wants me to do, and even more than that, who he wants me to be uh, in my Christian life. And so how is it that we can remain focused like Paul did? Well, I want to share with you three truths this morning on how we can be focused going into the new year. And number one, I want us to say that we need to live with the freedom of our past sins and mistakes. 
We need to live with the freedom from our past sins and mistakes. Now, I'm talking to Christians here, obviously. So I'm talking here, as Paul is, to those who are saved, those who have been forgiven, those who have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, those who know Jesus Christ, have a relationship with God through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And to know that gives us a freedom that we know we've been forgiven. Now, Paul's going to say in this letter, as he does elsewhere, the fact that we have been forgiven is not a license to sin. We don't sin more and more simply to receive more and more grace. We have received the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ by being forgiven, and now our focus is not on sin and what we've done in the past, but our focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness that we have received of Him. And... Of course, when we do sin, we still have that forgiveness of Christ. But confessing and agreeing with God in that brings fellowship with Him, a restored sense of fellowship, and a stronger focus then to live for Him and put away the sin that that does so easily beset us, the writer of Hebrews tells us. And so not dwelling on the past and the things that we have done in the past. Now, Paul had quite a past. And he says here, I persecuted the church of God beyond measure. He, tried, he wasted it. He tried to destroy it. Can you imagine that? So we think about sins and, and how terrible they are. And there are terrible sins that, that men and women commit. There are terrible sins that we can think of. And one of the most terrible we ought to think of is how we try to do those things which would hinder the work of God. How we would try to hinder the church from doing what God's called the church to do. Or hinder a Christian from doing what God has called us to do. And Paul, of course, persecuted the church. What he was doing was having people arrested. He was having them put to death. He was right there when Stephen was stoned. And he was agreeing that he should be stoned because of the way that he was preaching and witnessing about the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there are people all over the world that are persecuted for the cause of Christ today. Now, we don't experience a lot of that here, but all over the world there are men and women, missionaries, who are dying for their faith. And people who live in other countries who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ who are giving their lives for for Christ because the church is being persecuted. There are those who are trying to destroy it. So Paul, of course, was one of those who tried to destroy the church. But something miraculous happened. He met the Lord Jesus and he got saved. And he realized that he had been forgiven of those sins. Now, did he ever forget those sins? Did he ever forget those things that he had done? We're not humanly capable of doing that, okay? We're not humanly capable of just completely putting that out of our mind. That's why Paul even reminds the churches of Galatia, hey, this is my life before I met Christ. I persecuted the church of God. I was a sinful man. But he didn't let that become the focus of his life. He didn't let that keep him down. He didn't let the devil use that against him as he moved forward in his Christian life because he became a believer in Jesus Christ. He was radically converted. And so after his conversion, Paul says, I didn't immediately consult with flesh and blood. He waited three years before he sought out the the other apostles. What was he doing in those three years? Well, he was focusing on learning from God. He was focusing on his relationship with God. He was spending time with Jesus and learning the Scripture and he was learning how it was properly interpreted in the Old Testament and God was revealing to him what he was going to have him do and be as he continued on in his Christian life. Folks, we can take that time with the Lord and we need to every day to focus not on how terrible we've been in the past, though we can't discount that, but to think about how God is teaching us today and who he wants us to be and what he wants us to do. Perhaps undoubtedly he was growing in that new relationship with the Lord and he was moving forward. Here's what he was doing. He was letting God forgive him. Now, if you've ever said this, I'm not saying to you that that what you said was completely wrong because I've said this before myself. But there often is too much emphasis on trying to forgive ourselves from something that we've done in the past. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't let go of it, but I'm going to tell you, 
what we need to do more than forgiving ourselves from what we've done, our sins in the past, is letting God forgive us and trusting that God has forgiven us in Christ Jesus. Because you need to remember that as a child of God, you stand before God justified. It's a marvelous word in the Bible. It's a word that means we have been declared righteous before God, not on the basis of our, our own goodness or what we've done or, or haven't done and what we've done good or bad, but on the basis of what Christ has done for us. And so, folks, I just want to tell you, it's not if, if you say, well, I just got to learn to forgive myself, you're putting the emphasis on you. How about saying, I've got to learn to accept the forgiveness that Christ has already given me? And you hold on to that past and it keeps you down and you think about all those bad things. Just let God forgive you. He's cast your sin, the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, even to the depths of the sea. And so we need to let God forgive us. We get stuck in the past if we're we're not careful. And we're unable to move forward. And God has a good plan for us. And he has separated us, just like he separated Paul. The, word, the term really means selected. He had selected Paul, nobody else. He had selected Paul for this mission to focus on. Move away from the past and focus on what I've called you to. And he has selected us as well. Paul says he's been called. That was a divine invitation to participate in the blessings of redemption. And we've been called there too. Redemption, being redeemed, being forgiven, being bought back, the price paid by our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's live with a freedom from the past and let's begin to focus on the future because number two, I want to say, we need to live a life with the Spirit's confidence in the presence. The Spirit's confidence in the presence. If you go back and look at verses 11 and 12, Paul says, But I certify you, brethren, the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. He said, this is my present. This is, I didn't, I didn't look, I didn't go to somewhere else. I listen to God and I'm moving forward with God. And so he's living victoriously in the present, doing what God has called him to do. The gospel wasn't preached to him by any man in any way. He received it through the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he was led by the Spirit and didn't consult uh, with others. Now, that's not to say that in our present living, as we focus on Christ and His calling upon our lives, that we shouldn't listen to others. I've got good godly voices in my life that I listen to. People that I know love the Lord and love me and want what's best for me. And I'm going to listen to those voices. I'm going to focus first on the Lord Jesus, all right, in His Word. But I know that there are good Christian voices. There are good people, good men and women, who love the Lord and know the Word and won't steer me in the wrong direction. Now, I'm not saying that everybody's perfect. We, none of us are, obviously. But we need that accountability one to another. We, we certainly do. And so, I, I want us to be reminded of that. But make sure that what Whatever we get, whatever counsel we get from someone else comes from God's Word. Martin Luther um, was jailed for, for uh, placing those 95 theses on the door of the church at Wittenberg. He, he, he was imprisoned by the church because he wanted to get the Word of God into the common people's hands. He recognized that the teaching of the church was false. It was So much of it was wrong. And the common people didn't have access to the Word of God. They just had to listen to what people were telling them. And he wanted them to have the Word of God because the just shall live by faith. That's what he understood. Uh, That we we are saved by the grace of God and we live by our faith in God. And so... um, We need to make sure that we're living in that present today, that God is speaking, that we're listening to Him. We're listening to to other good voices, yes, but we are following what the Lord has to say to us. Now, Paul lived victoriously in the present because he lived to to please God, and he saw that all of his experiences, past, present, even what would come future, he saw those through spiritual eyes. And that's what we need to do as well. This came by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so, yes, God gave him a revelation of the gospel. 
And it's by God's Spirit that He reveals the gospel to us through the Word of God. And so we need to make sure that we're focusing on that in the present and to live to that extent in the present. And to know that, yes, life is hard in the present. And we don't know exactly what the future holds, what exactly is going to happen to us tomorrow or the next day. But to know that living victoriously today means living in the Spirit through the revealed Word of God and through how God is speaking to us here and now. And move on day after day in the power of the Spirit of God. But living in the present, since the past is gone and the future is not yet here, we have the now, we have the today to live victoriously in Christ through the Spirit, seeing through spiritual eyes. Live victoriously in the present. And then we can also live with a hope for the future. So if you look at verses 22 and 20, uh, through 24, Paul says, He was unknown by face under the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, they'd only heard. He which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which he once destroyed, and they glorified God in me. So Paul had hope that though his past was terrible, he'd persecuted the church. He'd been given the revelation of Jesus Christ. He was seeking to preach the gospel now, focus on spiritual things and what was important. He also had a hope that how God would use him would be a glory to God and be good to others. So when I pray, that's often what I pray for, especially if someone's sick, they're going through something difficult. I pray for God's good for for that person and God's glory for himself. That, That is what we should seek, for God to give us the good that he has for us. And when I say good, that's kind of a relative term, right? Because good in God's eyes is not always, doesn't always seem to be good for us or to us. We don't have the big picture like God has. He knows what we're going to face in the future. That's why He's doing a work in us now. Don't forget that. The reason God does the work in you now to draw you close to Him so that you can see with spiritual eyes is because He knows what's coming tomorrow and the next day. He wants you to have the good of trusting Him and depending on Him and following Him and finding strength in Him so that you can glorify Him, that you can honor God, you can glorify God in uh, everything. So the news of Paul's conversion had preceded him in, in the churches here. They'd heard that he was now a preacher of the gospel and the Spirit had prepared the way for Paul by preparing the hearts of those who not, had not yet even seen him, but would see him and would hear him. He, he didn't need to fear. He didn't need to fear because they had accepted what God had done in his life. And so if we're living by the Spirit, we need not, fear, um, need not live in fear ourselves, fear of what the future holds. Um, I am realizing the older I get, um, you know, the more there are fearful things that are out there. So I was in the uh, nursing home just a few days ago. Walked, by, walked down the hall, by, person by person, who's sitting out in the hall with their heads, you know, over asleep, or going to a room and no one there to see them, and thinking about what that might mean, you know, as a future for me or or other people. It's kind of a fearful thing, you know, to think about. And then I I see people who who've been diagnosed with. Uh, illnesses and I think you know that could be the future for me you know I don't know and then I see others who who've lost precious loved ones close to them and I think that could be the future for me and there are fearful things in the future and yet again I God teaches me through all of that that this world once again or he reminds me I already know it he just reminds me that this world will not stand in this state forever. That He has something much better prepared for His children. That He loves us and cares for us. And though we suffer persecution or we suffer disease, we suffer through death, all of those things, we still have a God who loves us and is glorified in us through the promises of the future that He has 
laid out for his children. Just as we studied in Sunday school this morning, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ gives us a promise and a hope for the future that we belong to him, that, we, that he cares for us, and that he, that he loves us, and he wants us to glorify him as we live our lives today and as we look forward to whatever the future may hold for us. We can look at what God does in a person's life and it gives us hope in the future of others, you know. I mean, Paul, persecutor of the church, now preacher of the gospel. Who saw that coming? Paul didn't. The apostles didn't. He tried to destroy us. Now he preaches the gospel. Who knows what God, what great things God has in the future? Think about great men of God who faithfully preach the gospel, like Adrian Rogers and Billy Graham. Maybe there are others out there. Maybe they're in here. Who knows? God has a hope for his people and promises that he will be glorified in and through his people when we live for him. So what's God trying to tell us today? Well, we need to we need to let go of that past that's holding us back. We've been forgiven. We've been cleansed. Let's live in the presence. Let's look through spiritual eyes at life that God has placed in front of us and know that we have a great hope for the future because Jesus is already there. He already knows. He, he's already working just as he knew you and I before the foundation of the world and knew that he was going to send his son to be the redeemer of the world so that we could live our lives in freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from an old way. Freedom from our own selfishness and pride and, and have that hope, that confident expectation in the Lord Jesus Christ. What are some practical things that we can do this, to fo- ways that we can focus on this? Well, number one, I think, again, um, make sure that if you're saved today, that you're not letting the devil keep you back by reminding you of past sins and failures and mistakes. Folks, receive God's forgiveness. It is true, it is good, and it is right for you. Let go of that past. Place it in God's hands. Just imagine nailing your past to the cross because he nailed our sins there. And then abide in Christ. John 15 tells us, Jesus said, to abide in me in the love of Christ. Don't abide in fear. Don't abide in the, uh, the approval of others, our past, or even our future. Abide in Christ and he'll take care of the rest. And we do that as we grow in our relationship to him as Paul did. Grow in, in Christ. Spend your time with Him alone. In the Bible. In His Word. On spiritual disciplines. Know what you believe and know why you believe it. Talk to and pray with cr- trusted Christian friends. Paul spent 15 days, he said, here with Peter. And then later on, he's going to confront Peter. Because um, Peter was being led astray by the false teachers. There was an accountability there that Paul and Peter had one with another. An accountability to the gospel and to one another. We can do that as well. And then, of course, pray. Pray for God to work in your life. Pray to stay focused on spiritual things. What's really important? Know what's your business. And know what's none of your business. Let's bow together. Father, today we're so grateful for Jesus who died for us. Thankful that salvation is by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in nothing or no one else. We're grateful today that we have received that salvation that you give us so graciously by faith in the Lord Jesus and again in no other. So Lord, I know that a lot of people here today are saved, but there may be some who are not. They've never really been forgiven and cleansed. They've never repented from their old way of life and placed their faith and trust in Jesus and been forgiven of their sins. So I pray today 
that, that they will um, believe in their heart that Jesus is God's Son, trust Him as their Lord and Savior, call on His name. Lord, your, your Word tells us there must be repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. It's, it's uh, two sides of the same coin, Father, as we just think about turning to You in faith and trust. So I pray for those here today who are lost, that they'll be saved, that they'll come forward and make that public and uh, follow the Lord in believer baptism and church membership. Father, give them the strength to do that today. And I pray for Christians who've been holding on to the past, Christians who, who can't seem to let go. Uh, Lord, help us to let go to today, to know that you have broken the chains that keep us back. Lord, help us not to put those chains back on ourselves, but to recognize, Father, that we live daily in the moment and help us to live spiritually for you, trusting you and following you in everything. We thank you for the wonderful future that you have for us and the hope that we see in how you'll be glorified uh, through the remainder of this time that you have set uh, for this earth. And so, Lord, we pray for others. We pray for others who are bound in sin, that they'll be saved and changed as gloriously as Paul was, uh, released, Father, to serve you and honor you, to preach the gospel, to witness everywhere they go. Father, you know uh, our needs today, and we commit those to you, Father. And so now, would you be honored and glorified through our response to your message today? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand and... Sing our hymn of response. This is your time to respond to the Lord. The altar's open if you want to come and kneel and pray. If I can help you from God's word and pray with you, I'll be glad to do that today as we sing. I've wandered far away from God. Now Thank you for your prayers and, and kind attention today in the service. If you're visiting, we're so honored that you're here today. We're always glad to have guests with us as we worship the Lord. And you're welcome here at Mount Olive anytime. Remember this afternoon, we'll have our fifth Sunday evening singing and uh, finger food fellowship afterwards. So we'll begin at 5 now. So keep that in mind. 5 o'clock out here in the sanctuary. And whatever time we get finished, we'll go uh, in the fellowship hall and um, have some, some food and some fun 
together. If you want to bring some board games or something like that for the fellowship afterwards, that'd be fine. We'll just spend some time fellowshipping together. Uh, remember, we won't meet on Wednesday uh, f- because of the holiday, the new year. And so uh, from my wife and I, we want to wish you the happiest of new years as you focus. Focus on the Lord. Put Him first. And focus on how He wants to use all of us, individually and as a church, for His honor and for His glory. All right? Anything else before we dismiss? All right. I hope you have a great afternoon. I look forward to seeing the Lord's house this afternoon at 5 o'clock. So let's bow together. We'll have our closing prayer. Stan, will you lead us, please?